So I figured out that this, uh, there is a circuit in there that is decoding the instructions from the control module of the car, and it is uh, outputting a drive voltage to this motor. The problem is this motor does not respond uh, to the signals, doesn't respond to the, to the DC drive voltage. I think the brushes are worn in it, and I'm going to try to see if I can find another one. There are uh, two numbers on the case of the motor, and I've got some dimensions that I will share. Uh, it looks like the motor is made in China. I see a number KN418312, and then there is an RF370CN-13671. I'll look those up and see what I can find. And I know the the, um, the output of the module is about uh, almost 11 volts, plus or minus. And I've taken another one apart, the original one, and I could find, I see all that the brushes in this one were burned up and I was looking at the the, um, the winding of the motor, and there the, you can see the commutator is kind of destroyed on this one. Right there, you can see the commutator is kind of destroyed. This this motor just quit spinning. It would spin in one direction and not the other, and I believe the brushes are just worn out and uh, no longer working with it. You can see the brushes are worn. Or in this case, you can see the commutator is kind of worn out. And there are the brushes, they're totally destroyed. All right, I'm working on the Nissan Maxima here on the HVAC. Got a setup down here where I've got the uh, this blend actuator hooked up to the HVAC controller right here with this uh, three-pin connector. Got my voltmeter attached to the output of the uh, the drive motor that would be inside there, but I took the, the motor out because it's no good. And so I've got this uh, this uh, lever here. And you can see when I move the lever, it will uh, satisfy the, um, the driver and go to zero. It looks like it swings from plus to minus 10. You can see right now, I just gently move the lever and I've got zero volts now. And I'll show you again, I can move it very gently. So in that direction, it, it's applying 10 volts, 10.9 volts to the motor. I can move it back gently. It's, it's very sensitive. So now it's zero, and if I move it in the other direction, it'll go negative. You can see now it's negative 10.8 volts. So I'll go back to zero. It's real sensitive. And what this, what this uh, is telling me is that this actuator here is, um, blending the uh, hot and the cold air to get the correct temperature. And I'll show you why I figured that out. Uh, because up in here, I'm running at 72 degrees. I'm gonna push this, uh, and you can see right now, maybe you can see it, if the glares, I don't know if that glares, I'll, I'll move this up here. So, can you see the numbers? Okay, so you can see it's zero. If I press the, the negative, the blue button to drop the temperature right now, it's at 72. I'll drop it. it usually takes like two degrees to, for it to respond. There's 71, 70. So I went to 70 and you can see I've got minus 10 volts now that's applied to the motor. 
So I'll go back up to 72. And it's still hanging in there. There it goes. 73 puts it back at zero. Now if I raise the temperature, I'm going to go up a few more degrees. There it went one degree to 74, and now I'm getting positive 10.9. So I'm fairly confident that the, um, the controller here is working, and I'm fairly confident that the module is receiving the correct signal. The problem is with the DC motor, it, uh, I got that one from a salvage yard and it uh, worked for like one or two minutes and then it quit. It would go in one direction but not the other. And so I'm pretty, I feel fairly certain that if I replace that module there, this actuator, it, maybe the system will begin to work again. And that would be nice because I, I'm getting a pretty, uh, it's pretty consistent response. So now I'll go back down to say 72 or let's see 71 71 brought it back down to where it's satisfied now it's it's set so whatever that level is and so let's see I'm gonna go ahead and take it up to a very high temperature here high as it'll go just to see I want to see how high this thing will so I got 85 degrees and I'm getting plus 10 volts so I'm gonna come down here It's a problem with a uh, LCD screen. So I'm going to see what it takes to satisfy that. I want to move it. This red, this red is the range I figured out. I painted that on there. I figured that's the range that the uh, this device is, operates in. Once I took it apart and looked at it. So I'm going to go all the way up here and see if it'll uh, kick off. Doesn't kick off in that direction. Wait, I, I crossed it. There it is, right? Uh, where is it? There it is, right there. So in that position there is where the uh, the actuator would be happy with the lever, and that's at 85 degrees. And right now the temperature is maybe 60 outside. I'm going to go ahead and run this temperature cold as it'll get. Let's see how cold it'll go. I think it's either 65 or 60. Sixty-five is as cold as I can get it to set. And so coming down here, I'm getting that minus 10 volts. Now let's see what that would require. I'm thinking it's gonna be back in here somewhere. Hadn't found it yet. Yeah, there it is. It's pretty far back in here. There it is. So that's where the lever would be satisfied with minus 65 with 65 degrees. So this is pretty much the range of this actuator from here to say there. And the red there is uh I painted is actual this uh in conjunction with this red dot here on the side, that this is the actual range of this actuator from looking at it inside. It's from here to about there. Right here is where the actuator is uh, would be located, and it's held in with the three screws. It's a little hard to get to, but right now I've got my ECUs just kind of floating in there, so I can get to it easier.